Welcome to DX Sudoku training video number 41. In this video, we will discuss the advanced puzzle solving technique called X-Chain. For this video, we are not going to start out by showing you an X-Chain pattern. Instead, we are going to concentrate on how to make the X-Chain sequence. When searching for an X-Chain sequence, we cycle through all nine possible numbers. We are currently showing all the cells having a possible one candidate highlighted in green. To build up our X-Chain sequence, we are going to cycle through each cell having a possible one candidate. We will be looking for a cell participating in a strong link with another cell. We will explain what a strong link is shortly. For now, just know an X-Chain sequence must begin with a strong link. We will begin our search. We start with cell 2, 4, now highlight it with a black outline. All the cells 2, 4 could connect with having a strong link are now highlighted in dark green. We review all the connection points and conclude cell 2, 4 cannot be the starting point for our X chain. This is because there are no cells having a strong link relationship to start the chain. We move to cell 2, 5 to continue our search. All the cells 2, 5 could connect with having a strong link are highlighted in dark green. This time we find a strong link now highlighted in black. The line between the cells is solid to indicate a strong link. The arrow indicates the direction of the strong link. At this point, we are going to review the different types of links that can occur in a Sudoku puzzle. A strong link is a relationship between two candidates where if one candidate is false, the other must be true. This definition does not preclude the possibility that both candidates turn out to be true at the same time, but both being true would, of course, violate our basic rule of Sudoku where we can't have two cells having the same value. A weak link is a relationship where if one candidate is true, the other must be false. Again, this does not preclude the possibility both candidates in a relationship are both false at the same time. An either-or link is a strong link and a weak link in both directions at the same time. With an either-or link, one candidate is true while the other is false. Both candidates cannot both be true and both candidates cannot both be false. Even though there is an either-or type link between cell 2, 5 and cell 5, 5, we are only interested in the strong link in the direction shown for our X-chain sequence. So we are building up our X-chain algorithm. Here is what we have so far. For the first two cells in our X-chain sequence, we find two cells having a strong link relationship between them. The next step in the algorithm is to assume the first cell in our X-chain sequence is false, as shown with the red X over the possible 1 candidate in cell 2, 5. Because of the strong link between cell 2, 5 and cell 5, 5, we are now showing cell 5, 5 having a value of 1 in red. From the current cell being true, the next two cells in our X-chain must have a strong link in the sequence. From the cell 5, 5, we are highlighting all our choices for the third cell in dark green. We pick cell 5, 6 as the first cell to try as the third cell in our X-chain sequence, now highlighted in light purple. We have highlighted all our choices for the fourth cell in our chaining sequence in dark green. But none of these cells in dark green have a strong link relationship with cell 5, 6. So we can conclude cell 5, 6 is not a good choice for our third cell in our X-chain sequence. We are now using cell 4, 6 as our choice for the third cell, now highlighted in light purple. All the choices for the fourth cell are highlighted in dark green. This time we find a third and fourth cell that satisfies our requirement for a strong link relationship as shown. Notice we have a weak link between cells 5, 5 and cell 4, 6 as indicated by a dotted line and an arrow for direction. A weak link means if cell 5, 5 is true, then cell 4, 6 must be false as indicated by the red X over the possible 1 candidate. Notice the strong link between cell 4, 6 and the cell 4, 3 is shown with by a solid line and the arrow to indicate the direction. We have a red 1 in the cell 4, 3 as the next value in our X-chain sequence. Next we are going to add a new rule to our X-chain search algorithm. After our X-chain reaches a length of 4 cells, ending with the cell being true, we look for a kill zone and target candidates to kill. The kill zone is defined by any cells being shared by the first and last cell in our X-chain sequence as shown in red, except at this point in the sequence we do not have any possible candidates to target in our kill zone. Notice what we have at this point is a turbofish pattern. A turbofish is an X-chain composed of four cells and three links. Again we update our search algorithm. 
This time we add continue the search from the last cell in the sequence. All the possible choices for our fifth cell are now highlighted in dark green. Just as with the third and fourth cell in the sequence, we look and find a strong link between the fifth and sixth cell in our X-chain sequence as shown. Note the first kill zone we found is still valid even though we extended the X-chain sequence beyond it. Again we look and find a second kill zone highlighted in red. This time we find a target candidate to kill highlighted in dark red. We continue the search. All our possible choices for the seventh cell in our sequence are highlighted in dark green. We add our seventh and eighth cell to the X-chain sequence as shown. We define the kill zone according to which cells are visible to both ends of the X-chain. We identify one more additional target candidate to kill. Just as before, we continue our search. All the cells we can consider as our ninth cell in the X-chain sequence are highlighted in dark green. This time we do not find a ninth cell having a strong link to a tenth cell. Our X-chain sequence is at its end. We could choose the starting cell as the ninth cell and cell 5,5 as our tenth cell, but this would result in an endless loop so there's no point in making this choice. Before we remove the non-possible candidates, let's consider the logic of our X-chain sequence. We update our algorithm one more time. As with all Sudoku puzzle solving techniques, it is best to visually validate your logic before removing non-possible candidates. There are two scenarios we have to consider. The first scenario is our starting cell 2,5 is false as shown with the red X and now circled in red. Because this results in having a value of 1 in cell 2,9 as shown with a red circle, all the target candidates in our kill zone are killed as shown. The second scenario is our starting cell is true, that is, has a value of 1 as shown. Again, all our target candidates are killed as shown. Since both scenarios result in our target candidates being killed, we can conclude these are non-possible candidates. We've removed the non-possible candidates from our Sudoku puzzle. In our DX Sudoku videos, we rely heavily on colorizing cells and graphics to demonstrate patterns. Like with all Sudoku puzzle solving techniques, after you practice seeing the pattern many times, you will detect the pattern much faster without any help. This example has a very interesting wrinkle to the X-chain sequence we would like to demonstrate. Here is the X-chain sequence in progress. At this point in the algorithm, all the cells we can consider as our fifth cell in the X-chain sequence are highlighted in dark green. We find the fifth and sixth cells in our X-chain sequence as shown. We determine the kill zone and we find a non-possible sixth candidate to target. We continue the search for the seventh cell in our X-chain sequence. All the cells we can consider for the seventh cell in the sequence are now highlighted in dark green. We find the 7th and 8th cell in our X-chain sequence as shown. We determine the additional kill zones and we find another non-possible 6th candidate to target. What is interesting about this example is one of the possible 6th candidates we are targeting is a non-possible candidate participating as a link in the X-chain sequence. Notice how cell 3,2 is both a target candidate and also part of our X-chain sequence. We visually validate our logic and we remove the non-possible candidates from our kill zone as shown. Here is another X-chain example with a strange loop we would like to demonstrate. All the cells having a possible 9 candidate are now highlighted in green. Here is the X-chain sequence in progress. At this point following the algorithm we determine our current kill zone, but there are no possible 9 candidates to target in our kill zone. It is interesting to point out not only do we have a valid X-chain at this point, but we also have a valid TurboFish pattern. Next, all the cells we can consider as our fifth cell in the X-chain sequence are now highlighted in dark green. We find our fifth and sixth cell in our X-chain sequence. There is no kill zone at this point because the intersecting cell is between the two cells of the first strong link of the X-chain. So we highlight in dark green all the cells we can consider for our 7th cell in our X-chain sequence. We find our 7th and 8th cell in our X-chain sequence as shown. But notice how the 8th cell in our sequence is the first cell of the X-chain sequence. This is a very special case. When this happens, we choose our chaining candidate as the value of the starting cell. 
The new kill zone is shown based on setting our starting cell of our X chain 6, 6 to the value of 9. Before we remove any non-possible candidates, let's confirm the logic of how this works. Let's consider cell 4, 1, now highlighted in light purple. There are two scenarios we need to consider. The first scenario is cell 4, 1 has a value of 9, now shown in red. Here is the consequence of having a 9 in cell 4, 1. This results in our starting cell having a value of 9 as shown. The second scenario is we do not have a value of 9 in cell 4, 1, as shown by having a red X over the possible 9 candidate. Here is the consequence of having 4, 1 not have a value of 9. This also results in our starting cell having a value of 9 as shown. Notice how the logic travels backwards through our X chain back to the root starting cell. Since both scenarios result in our starting cell having a value of 9, we must conclude from our X chain sequence the starting cell must be 9. This requires us to update our X chain search algorithm to include this new loopback rule. If our sequence ends with a strong link back to the first cell, we choose the candidate as the value of the first cell. We choose the value 9 for our starting cell as shown. The non-possible candidates are removed. Time to test what you have learned. Before we begin, please remember to take some time to support the Sudoku. Pause the video and find the X chain. Identify the sequence and target candidates to kill. The next slide will be a hint. Here is a hint. The first cell is highlighted. Pause the video, identify the exchange sequence, and target candidates to kill. Here is the solution. Pause the video and find the exchange. Here is a hint. Pause the video. Here is the solution. Pause the video and find the exchange. Here is a hint. Pause the video. Here is the solution. Pause the video and find the X chain. Here is a hint. Pause the video. Here is the solution. Pause the video and find the X chain. Here is a hint. Pause the video. Here is the solution. Pause the video and find the X chain. Here is a hint. Pause the video. Here is the solution. Pause the video and find the X chain. Here is a hint. Pause the video. Here is the solution. Pause the video and find the X chain. Here is a hint. Pause the video. Here is the solution. Pause the video and find the X chain. Here is a hint. Pause the video. Here is the solution. Pause the video and find the X chain. Here is a hint. Pause the video. Here is the solution. This completes the Exodoku training video number 41. Please take some time to support the Exodoku. Thank you for watching.